going a little bit of like this whole notion of influence and, and the power, how many of you guys recognize that face? Who is she? This girl? Yeah. No, that's not Ronaldo. Uh, Jazz? Who else? Kylie Jenner. Cool. I won't tell you yet. So the power of influence, we talked a little bit about, but I just want to tease you guys that thought, right? When you run an, an effective influencer program, right, we looked at a Fortune 100 companies, right? Uh, the big ones, they have a collective reach of 200 million, 20 million people on Instagram. When you map your top 100 influencers in the world, you got about 800 million, right? And then when you start identifying the connection points, the passion points that brings those people together, it's an infinite possibility, right? And this is why everyone is running to influencer marketing, right? And then also, when you have an authentic connection to an influencer, the storytelling that you can do, it's much, much deeper, right? We heard from the chief brand officer from Ford this week, also in our class, right? And he said the utopia of influencer marketing now is when a person is starts his message going. I just want to make sure that you guys know this is not a sponsored post. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that you have to say that now it is just crazy because now consumers are people. They have expectations. They're calling BS on everything and they'll see it, they'll smell it. And then what they'll do? They just walk away from your brand, right? So just a couple sound bites to back it up. Authentic con like posts, right? Kim Kardashian, or let's call a tier one influencer, right? I'm using her as an example, gets an average of a 9% engagement on a, <clears throat> on a post. She has 100 million followers, right? Let's just round up to 10. She got about 10 million to see it. Apple has about 4 million and 2% engagement. And that's just not Apple. This is industry st standard. I'm using just two people to, be, to make it simpler to connect the dots, right? I'm sure if you go into their numbers, it's a little bit different. But a branded content gives you about 2%. A person's content gives you about 9%. So where should you put your money? <laughs> the second one, about stories, right? Sorry. Okay. Just leave it at that. IG stories, right, is giving you, from an influencer standpoint, 12%. A brand, and this is, this is a real number, right? It's 6%, right? Here's the thing. Um, this is real. Like, when they go live, it's just they're live, right? Like, I do watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Chris Jenner created a $4 billion company, and no, like, don't take it personally, but they don't have a special talent. <laughs> they're not doctors. They're not singers, like, they're not performers. They're just a good old American family. <laughs> God bless the United States. America. Yeah. I love you as I say that for you, to, for you to fail in the United States, you have to work really hard. <laughs> and we know people that do. <laughs> so, um, to put in context, right? I'm not saying this is like the blueprint of the holy grail of influencer marketing, but it's about context, it's about relevance, and it's about reach. The selfie kid at Super Bowl, perfect example with a perfect storm, right? And then once you do that, influence becomes currency, right? And then you can monetize. And then type of content, uh, influence, like content that gets a lot of engagement, don't you love when you put like tons of videos and you're like, okay, is it going to play or not play? So, collective. How many of you guys are familiar with Coachella? Right? I know there's a person here that goes every year. <laughs> um, it's a movement. It's a tribe, right? So, declarative. 
you know, Oprah's speech, right? I used to have the Emma Watson speech uh, at the UN. Uh, personal. How many of you guys seen the social experiment of the first kiss? It's pretty cool. They just selected random people, say you're going to walk in the room and you're going to kiss that person for the first time and you don't know them. What they did, they brought those people back a year ago to see if they actually got to hang out, they, what they did, and if they would be willing to kiss each other again. Right? I tried to convince my wife to do it, she didn't let me. <laughs> um, surprising. See, it's, you can't really see it because it's a surprise. <laughs> but <laughs> I have here Kylie Jenner's announcement, perfectly timed the day of the Super Bowl, <laughs> right? I was like, come on. Uh, contagious, the, the a ALS challenge, and then the Me Too, the Women's March, which triggers something, right? All those things you see, they're not overproduced. They're not like multi-million dollar productions, but they're real. They're authentic and they're relevant. So, why it matters? It allows you to react faster and you create more impact, right? I think, you know, those are the two big takeaways that I look in terms of influencer marketing. But you got to define the role of influencer very clear. An influencer has a role to help you bridge the gap in an authentic way, right, with your brand. I'm going to show you a quick video. Have you guys seen this uh, AV from uh, Ford, Lincoln, Navigator, right? Just pay attention to the message. I think it's super interesting. I got my first Navigator when I was about 18 or 19 years old. My sister was like, well, you have to name it. And for whatever reason, I named it Ginger. Ginger was all white, and she had 22s, and she had rims. I felt like, you know, I was kind of bawling in a way. It was like my first huge purchase. We had a lot of fun with Ginger. Ginger drove us to practice. In fact, we had a special playlist, and now I'm entering a different moment in my life. I'm a mom, which is still so insane to me. Everything is working in a full circle. I always had a connection in the beginning and now later on in life as well. Serena Williams needs to be in The Navigator. Let's just be honest. Love it, right? Like, when you see that, it's not your traditional car, you know, uh, uh, advertising. It's not a tied ad as well. Uh, but it, it's real, right? She does have a story and a connection with Lincoln, right? And you believe it. She had a playlist. She had a name. You know, it was Ginger, you know? And then when you see that, you're like, you relate and you connect in a very emotional way. Another quick one, and we're almost done because I want to make sure we have time for Q&A. That picture that I asked you guys, you recognize that face, is Danielle Cathati, right? She's a college student, 21 years old, fashion designer, and then she started taking Adidas clothing, taking it apart, and rebuilding them. And in any brand in the past, you'd be like, what are you doing? And try to sue that kid, right? What Adidas did, they hired her as a designer, right? That's when you're an influencer, start becoming a collaborator with your brand, and then they're proving the point that popularity doesn't equal to influence but also that people buy from people that they trust. This is uh, Danielle and Kendall Jenner getting ready for Fashion Week, right? And that's her collection, like super disruptive. Like it pushed the brand in a different space where she takes like daddy pants, take it apart, put it in a jacket. That's creativity. Creative empowerment, it's part of consumers' life today. They're not just consuming, they're creating, they're producing, they're curating, they're collaborating. So you gotta move your brand in their life in that way. 